I've been getting, I don't know, maybe a dozen requests from different viewers to guide them or be their guru or something, you know, amounting to the same thing. And I have to write them back and say, well, look, I'm not a guru. <laughs> I'm not a guru and I'm not your guru because you're not here. You see, the connection between the guru and the disciple, or I should say the connection with the guru, is a matter of an energy exchange. It's not about knowledge or information or religious titles or positions or principles. It's a direct connection between two beings. And that really can't be done at a distance, either by mail or email or even a video conference or anything like that. It has to be in person. Huh? The Vedic word Upanishad. Upa means up close. Apana means sit down. And ashat means also, you know, sit for a long time, patiently, and hear. So Upanishad is full of stories of gurus and disciples. So if you read these stories, what is happening is that the guru and disciple are in physical proximity. They're together. They're not going through any kind of medium. It's a direct perception. And this is what's necessary. Huh? Like, you wouldn't claim to be in love with someone who you have never met in person. I mean, some people do, the, do it, but it's kind of crazy, isn't it? You'd have to meet. Maybe you, okay, sure, maybe you meet online somehow or other. But before you get ready to declare that you're in love with someone, don't you want to meet them in person? Before you want to get married with someone, don't you want to have actual contact with them? I mean, there used to be uh, mail order brides. Huh? You answer an ad in the paper and send off a check, and then this girl shows up <laughs> expecting to be married. But I'm sure most of those didn't wind up very satisfactorily. Because how can you get to know somebody? How can you feel what a person does and how it affects you? Unless you're there in person. It's just common sense, you know. But people get all kinds of ideas in their heads, and especially when they're influenced by unscrupulous businessmen. I'm not going to call them teachers or gurus, because they're not. They're businessmen, business people. There's even a few ladies there who charge for some kind of online experience of transmission or something, you know. And, you know, come on. <laughs> the relationship with guru should be more permanent than marriage. It should be more intimate, even, than any kind of family relationship. Why? Because the guru, the guru is the self. The guru speaks with the voice of one's own real self. 
which is that I am not the body, I am not the mind or words, I am that which is eternal, which never comes into being, which never goes out of being, which never changes. And there's only one thing like that, and that's Brahman, pure unconditioned awareness. So the guru speaks with the voice of Brahman. Very good. But Brahman is also in you. The same self that's in the guru <laughs> is within everyone, every living being, or even within stones, you know, everywhere. So that being the case, then when you reach a certain level of advancement, you can contact the guru within. But this can't be faked. And usually having an external guru is a prerequisite for that stage. In fact, the guru, if he's a real guru, will tell you when you reach that stage, okay, you don't need to be here anymore. You can go anywhere and the same Brahman is there. <laughs> the same guru is there as within me, as within you, as within everything. So if someone wants guidance, which is understandable, at a certain stage you need guidance, okay? And if it's not practical, like at the moment where there's no travel permitted, it, you can go to our videos. How many times have I said this? To start with the earliest series. Huh? And if you go to our channel page and click on the playlist tab and go all the way down to the bottom, then you'll find the early playlists. So you should look at those first because those are the prerequisites. Then the ones that come later are more advanced. So I think maybe what's happening is that some people will discover our channel newly and they come and, and watch some of the later series and then they feel like, whoa, I'm not getting this. I need some help. I need some guidance. And if you haven't watched the early series, that's probably true because you don't know our language, our vocabulary, our philosophical background, and so forth. So the best way to get that guidance is not through email. I don't have time to correspond and get to know people online, you know. Uh, I have too many things to do. So that's not a reflection. Of, it's not about you. It's about me. Huh? I'm, I'm occupied with taking care of myself, you know, and now lately I'm getting into, back into making music because my search is done. I feel satisfied. When I look in the various holy books, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got that. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, I know that. I can't find anything that's a challenge anymore, no matter how deeply I look in the various books. So to me, that says, that tells me, I got it. I'm at the end of the search. I'm at the end of the path, uh, the end of the road. And the thing about that is it opens up on complete freedom. And that's a wonderful thing to want to enjoy and experience. So I'm not interested in collecting followers or disciples. I'm not interested, very much not interested in forming an organization. That's the last thing I want to do. And I'm already have done like 800 and something videos, more than anybody can watch. <laughs> Hundreds of hours of material. And I've put thousands of hours over, I don't know, 20 years or so into writing books, making videos, teaching, preaching, <laughs> whatever. And yeah, I feel like I got it, you know, like I can, I can pretty much guide anybody. 
but they have to come to me. That's a prerequisite, Upanishad. Come close and sit down and then let's vibe it out, you know? Let's, let's connect on an energy level. Like my sannyas guru, Jnana Shakti Swami, a wonderful man, very simple, uh, homely man, in the Indian sense of the word homely, which means comfortable and easy to be with, plain, simple, nice, no big ego, you know? very, very uh, humble and, and advanced. So just to be around him was such a pleasure, you know, and everyone who met him considered him a friend. He's that kind of person, very likable person, right? And he's not on a big ego trip. He's not on a big doctrinal uh, trip, you know, like that. But he's like a window, an open window into pure Brahman. See, so my connection with him was always energetic. I don't think we ever touched physically. You know, a lot of times there's all this drama, this guru-disciple drama of touching the feet and this and that. But we never did any of that. <laughs> it didn't matter. Our connection was subtle, energetic, heart to heart. So there was no need for formality, no need for rituals, no need for any kind of a physically defined relationship. And it's even after he passed away from his body, I could still contact him. I could still feel him. And actually, after he passed away, I spent the rest of the day sitting next to his body and just meditating. At first, I couldn't find him. He was so gone. It took me a few hours of meditating next to his body. And then in the afternoon, after about, I don't know, three or four hours of straight meditation, I was able to contact him. And he was very, very high. He was like a god, you know, all pervading, all knowing, beautiful. Huh? So this is my guru. <laughs> but the thing is, I contacted him directly, not through a website or videos or any kind of medium. But, you know, he even came to my house several times. Uh, even though he was very old and sick and he had to use a walker and it was troublesome for him. But he came anyway. See, so that's the thing. That's a real friend. The guru is the best friend imaginable because he gives you the key to getting out of all suffering. So one should have that kind of relationship. You know, if somebody wants to be a disciple and wants me to be their guru, <laughs> I don't have any objection, but it has to be on my conditions. And my condition is you have to show up. Huh? You know, if somebody writes you on the internet and says, oh, you're my best friend, I love you, I want to be with you always, please guide me, you know, you, you kind of got to scratch your head and say, wait a minute, is this person sincere? Or are they fooling themselves? Because we haven't ever met. How can we have such a close relationship? So if someone comes and they stay for some time and that relationship is established, well, then even if they go away, there's a context you know, there's, there's something uh, established on which to base a relationship, that association, that face-to-face -face meeting, being in each other's energy fields. So that's the criterion to become disciple. Yeah, I don't mind if you have some questions to, to write me or whatever, like, but it has to be germane to the history of my work to the videos that I've made, which is really my life's work. I've spent more energy and time on that, uh, these videos than anything else in my whole life. Uh, so 
If you write me with a question about my videos or make a comment on the video online, I'll always respond, you know, and I'll try to guide you to the right view. But that doesn't mean I'm your guru. And it doesn't mean that I'm a guru unless somebody comes and actually becomes a disciple. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.